As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa rahman wa rahim As-salatu wa salamu ala rasulullah wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'een Amma'abad Alright, so I'm um, sorry for being late y'all We're just, you know, we're getting back into the flow of things um, People's finishing up salat um and these sort of things so welcome back everybody hope everybody had a great finish to their to their ramadan and i had a great eid inshallah hope everybody had a great time and spent time with the family and friends um and so forth inshallah um so is is mubarak here or not i believe he said he was here yes he was on. He's popped off again. Okay, but well, we're gonna we're gonna get started. So today's show is there's a, there's a lot of things that happened um, since the last time we talked, it's specifically within um, TMOA, the cult, the cult of TMOA, and um, 
we we had a, there, a bunch of different things that we could have chosen to talk about. Um, but we decided to speak about this since, you know, this is one of the first times that one of these alleged TMOA as Hari scholars kind of spoke out publicly um, about the beliefs that they have in TMOA, um, at least that we know of, that we've been paying attention to. Um, so we're going to address it. And just to be clear, we're, we're speaking about Jamal Abdul Wahid. I do not know his non-Muslim name, but he's married to Dordana. I think her name's Shakir, Abdul Shakir or Abdul Shakur, something like that. But she's she's TMOA's Kadi. She's one of TMOA's Kadis that she she recently graduated from Azhar University, and um, he's her husband. They have been living for the last like decade plus in Egypt. Um, allegedly, Jamal has also been attending Azhar, which um, Allah knows best if that's actually true or not. Um, and we'll we'll kind of get to some of those those things that are um, that are coming up. Um, so we're, we're going to talk about them. We, we basically, there's an audio on the, the TMOA youth, proud youth or whatever video of Jamal basically, um, telling a bunch of lies, quite frankly, about TMOA, about Mubarak Jelani, and also twisting, um, the meanings of the Holy Quran, um, inadvertently promoting shirk and bid'ah and all these sorts of things. And we're going to kind of address them, um, so I don't know if Mubarak or uh, Amr have anything to add before we kind of got get right into it. There's a lot of different things we want to cover. Um, there's a lot of quotes. We might not get through them all, but we're going to kind of get through the, the main idea of like what's going on. And you guys will see a theme. If you watch the video yourselves, anybody who even TMOA people, let's be, let's be realistic. When you guys watch the video, you're going to know that he's it's it's this a bunch of lies. Like these, this, these propaganda lies, they have to stop. It's, they're not fooling anybody. They're not fooling anybody. Um, the one thing that we like, we want to start with is that he, one of the quotes that he had, and this is, this is basically the, the advice that he should follow whenever he's making a public speak or a, a public speech about Tim away, about Jelani um, he says in there, I can only speak for myself, which is true. And he should have stuck to that because we all know that anybody's individual, personal, anecdotal experience doesn't really mean anything, right? He should have stuck to his own personal experiences and not cast it around. Like he, he makes some very bold claims about Jelani's effect on the Jamaat, Jelani's effect on Muslims in America. African American Muslims and Muslims across the entire globe, but these things are not true. But we're going to get into that. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some quotes on the screen, and I'm just going to get feedback from Mubarak and Amr, and we're just going to kind of touch in them about basically the observations they had um, when 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 they read. Um, the, the certain quotes that um, this, this brother was saying. And again, I just want to preface before we get into it, it. We're not trying to bash Jamal. I known Jamal. Jamal, I visited him in Egypt. Him and his wife, they fed me. They hosted me. They're very gracious. They're very kind. However, we do have to address the falsehood that he's promoting in this video. So, so um, I would like to... Uh... Just say one thing. Can you hear me? Is yeah, yeah, you're good. Oh, you got you got kicked. Yeah. Look at that. What's going Back on? Back to Zoom go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Come on, Restream. What you going? What you doing? I wonder what it could be. Maybe it's connection on his head. Side? Yeah, I don't know what's going on with that. Yeah, I don't know. It keeps it keeps like rebooting for some reason. I don't know. I don't know if it's uh my... um. I don't know if it's my side or it's just the app or whatever, but uh, can you yeah. can you hear me now? Yep, you're good. Okay, so uh, what I wanted to um, just say uh, it, with this quote, actually, um, I can only speak for myself, which uh, this is true. And I, and I think at this point, um, I will speak for myself. And that is that um, we um, 
course, we do not claim to be scholars. Uh, we do not claim to have, you know, um, some vast amount of knowledge of Islam. We're our students. We have spent lots of time studying the religion and are still continuing to do so. So that's number one. We're not um, uh, even trying to say that we uh, know more about the religion than, than uh, Uncle uh, Jamal or uh, Ustad Jamal or Sheikh Jamal, or however he wants to refer to himself. This is not a thing where we are trying to put ourselves above him or anything like that. But what he said um, was incorrect. I, I wish that my teachers and those people who are more knowledgeable in Islam than me could address these issues. I wish that I could get them to actually address them so that I would not have to speak from a, a position of uh, authority and be saying, speaking really, it's on behalf of the religion of Al Islam. It's on behalf of Allah and the Messenger. And this is a very heavy thing. So we're not taking this lightly. We would rather people that are more knowledgeable than us to do this. But the situation is such that <laughs> there's no one to do it uh, except for us. So um, mm -hmm. perhaps uh, in reality, me myself, I would say that. Um, Maybe I'm in over my head as far as just sitting here and telling people about what Allah and his messenger are saying. Of all the people that are in, in, in the world or just in, in my city, probably there's more people far better, far more qualified, uh, far more skilled, far more knowledgeable. Um, mm -hmm. But right now we are the ones who are available and Allah has put us in a position to speak. So we're, we are uh, going to try to do our best it's not trying to put ourselves above anyone or make ourselves seem better than anyone. Um, and if it seems that way, that's not the case. Our um, uh, approach is just purely business on the, on the religion of Islam and nothing more or less than that. If, if I see Jamal outside of my house or, or in, the, in my city or whatever, I would host him graciously and, and treat him well um, as best as I could, unless he refused. And otherwise, and I'm not responsible. But um, that's something that should, should be, should be yeah. clear. Um, yeah. so. And Jamal, if you do watch this, Dordana, May Allah bless you for whatever studies that you have. I do challenge both of you to actually speak up for what is right, enjoy what is good, forbid what is evil. Um, and, you know, don't don't be afraid to contact us, even if it's privately, you know, like we're, we're open to that. So the first quote I want to put up there is these are quotes that really have to relate to some of the falsehoods that he kind of talked about with Mubarak Jelani. Um, so I'll put this quote up there and I'm going to read it to everybody. He says, and he's talking about basically, uh, he says, Abuji, Sheikh Jelani's role with the Muslims of the Americas, the, his followers. And he says, especially for those that knows about the history of African American, uh, African Americans, they know about this, the attack against the African American father, resulting in a lot of cases the non-existence of the father figure in the household. And then he further says, he says, when we say Abuji, so he's, the whole thing is basically supporting why they call him, why they call Mubarak Jelani Abuji. Okay. Um, this one is too long to put up, but he says, when we say Abuji, not only are we talking about our father spiritually, so he's their spiritual father. He's their spiritual father. So I'll put that up there. We're not, not only talking about our father spiritually. He says, but in many cases, our father physically as well. Because he stepped in to fill the void for so many of us in many generations. My generation and generations above that. He literally stepped in and became the father. So that's that's pretty much the point he's making. He's saying that Mubarak Jelani came in and li literally became their father. So uh, he, the history of African American. Okay, so is he is he talking about just the history of African Americans in uh, just in in America? just in general, with that first quote, 
especially those of us that knows about the history of African American, they know about the attack against African American father, resulting mm -hmm. in a lot of cases, uh, cases of the non-existence of the father in the household. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so, for those people that don't know, um, the yeah, there 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 was an attack. Okay, there was a, a systematic approach to remove the father from the household, mm -hmm. like when they did the the, the welfare. What it, the uh, what was it the uh, the Civil Rights Act, mm -hmm. and since the Civil Rights Act and, and leading up through there from the 60s, 70s, 80s, things that they did, they gave welfare, but they would give the welfare and the benefits to the women, mm -hmm. and some of the stipulations for why you could not have uh, for some of the stipulations for having access to the welfare, to the funds and things, or to be able to live in the projects and different things that a man could not be in the home. So right. if the father, the husband, whoever was there, he actually had to sometimes even hide or run out the back door, you know? So because when they came around and looked and they would come and knock and check to see if there was a father in the home. Mm -hmm. So what did this do? This emasculated the man. It actually gave the power to the woman. So the woman could actually say, do what I say, or I'm going to tell, you know, such and such. I'm going to tell the government or mm -hmm. just get out of here because you're not even supposed to be here. I might call the cops on you. This is my mm -hmm. house. The Even if the father was was not wealthy enough to, to, to cover all the expenses of his family and his children, the government would step in and help to cover. That's one of the purposes of the government. But the stipulation was that they actually gave the funds to the woman. So his wife or his his his, his partner, his female partner, had the funds, had the money, had the purse strings. So this uh, emasculated a lot of the men. And some of the men just said, you know what? If I'm going to be treated this way, then I'm just not going to stick around. Some of them, not all of them. Um, but this was a systematic approach that was that, that was taken. I know I'm going let, through it. Let me ask really you something real quick. Mm -hmm. How does that compare to what actually happened in TMOA once Mubarak Jelani came on the scene? It's as identical. Far as we know. Yep. It's identical. <laughs> <laughs> it mm -hmm. is basically what happened. The women were um, were elevated. The, the, the fathers were taken out of the home multiple ways. Uh, one way was they were okay. The, the, their their uh, their authority was stripped away completely. Mm -hmm. So instead of father being the the leader of his household, and what he says goes first and foremost. And then if he decides for his family to um, adhere or join to or, or cooperate with some broader, uh, you know, community things or whatever, that would be his decision. Not in TMOA. Mm -hmm. Anything that the father says can be overruled by the administration. It's point blank. Whether it comes down to his finances to his physical person, where he can and can't be. They can stop him at the top of the road and say, you can't move from here, stay there. I've seen it with my own eyes. Yep. They can say, you can't leave your home. They can, uh, they can, um, uh, you know, of, of course we know about the, 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 just the money that comes in. Um, and so the, the attack on the father, his authority, first of all, completely gone. His finances, mm -hmm docked and stripped away, usurped, uh, stolen, whatever you want to call it, that too. Um, and, you know, I, I don't want to go too long, but I mean, he, he, in even elevating the women um, over the men and giving them authority over their men, this is something uh, as well. Yep. Uh, and I just want to say, like, um, when you think about it, he stepped in and became your father. Um, and he talks about how the, like the absence of the father. Jelani like was there for like a few years and then left y'all too and went back to Pakistan. So he mm -hmm. wasn't there for y'all either as a father figure. He was overseas. So how is that any different from your actual father not being there? Like it's it's a it, it sounds it's, yeah like it's like he, he wasn't there for you either. Exactly. Let me and then we ask you guys real quick. So and people type in the chat that are listening. If you're from TMOA or connected to TMOA, just type. Yes, my father was involved in my life or no, my father wasn't involved in my life. And if he wasn't involved in your life, I also want to see how many of y'all that your father was not involved in your life due to TMOA, due to Mubarak Jelani. 
because Mubarak was your father involved in your life? Um, my father and mother uh, were and I still are married for over 40 mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, I, I never knew a life without my father. Mm -hmm. and, and furthermore, I only know of two people that growing up like like person like within within um uh our uh land in tennessee only two people that did not have their father in, actively in their lives mm. and their fathers were dead mm. because of some foolishness that was involved with Jelani. exactly <laughs> they actually were they they, they they the reasons why actually there was three two of them that uh they they were killed and the suspicion is that they they were dead and it was be, it was due to you know jamaat stuff yep. um and uh, the other one is unknown but you know it's just speculation mm -hmm. uh furthermore even the people who visited tennessee everyone had you know fathers it, it was it was it was uncommon <laughs> For people not to have their mother and father, their mother and fathers, even if their mother and father weren't weren't married, they still, you know, they their, their fathers were in their lives. The only other people who visited Tennessee and came and lived with us for quite a while who didn't have fathers was the uh, the Adams family and the Kaaba family, who their fathers were in jail because of Jelani. Exactly. <laughs> 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 so 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 when we look at you know uh the fathers who were non-existent or how he had to become abuji it was his fault i mean he was the he was the catalyst for the reasons why at least the people that i knew that didn't you know their fathers were not active in their lives uh was something due to him but as far but for the most part um now we, as far as the, the the fathers having you know uh, funds and finances and spending a lot of time with their children that was an issue because they lived probably two hours sometimes away from where they had to work mm. why because jelani had them move to some place still taxed mm -hmm. them and took the money most of the funds so they could not actually support their families working in those small towns in which they lived next to that they had to travel farther yep. to the big city yep. if they were able to actually keep their funds, their hard-earned money, instead of having up to 100% of their check taken at times. Yep. It was up to 100%. Normally, 20% uh, was the standard yep. in which you had to pay to the administration. 35% was a, was a regular occurrence. I myself had to pay that, and I was a teenager working. Some, some communities had to so, pay 100%. Yep. Yeah. So 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 the the thing is, um, if we look at if we try to say, well, the fathers didn't exist, this is not true. They were there and they were active in their children's lives as much as they could be. Mm -hmm. If they were not actually on the lands throughout the week and they spent a lot of time out almost as if they were like truck drivers and stuff where they were never really there a lot. And that was because they had to work in the cities. And this was this reason was directly related to the policies that Jelani mm -hmm. instituted. Yep, exactly. And I can say for my generation, like I only there's only one person that I grew up with. That, like his father wasn't actively involved in his life. That's because like his his dad wasn't part of the Jamaat. So he couldn't go see him. Like so like you can't go see him. Yeah. But besides that, <laughs> exactly. everyone else's dad who was there in their lives. Like I remember my dad would work yeah. seven days straight. <laughs> like he had to drive like. 55 minutes from the California land to work in Sacramento uh, and work six days straight. Like, like, and that's just what he did. Cause he had to send money overseas to Jelani for my mother who was over there. Like, it's just, it's just great to be involved. Yes. Like, you know, it's, it, you know, it's, it's crazy because um, they don't even recognize where they actually could use, like they contradict themselves when they try to talk about Jelani's guidance, even in his own words, because at some points, he talks about the generations and generations that have been raised on Jelani's teachings. Well, how do you have generations and generations? Are all these women going out and just sleeping with random men and making kids? Like, or is Jelani actually fathering all these children? No, they had. There's they're actually father. Like every single person, it'd be hard for me to think of which friends I have had grew up with in TMA that their fathers actually weren't in their home. And there's one individual like you, it's the same, it's the same thing. One individual I could think of that his father was in his home, but he was never home. Why? Because he was over in Pakistan all the time. 
all the time serving Jelani. So this idea that Mubarak Jelani was this spiritual father and physical father, and he even says he even says something like really, really strange where he says, what, what did he say? He says, oh yeah, this is what he says. He says, for many of us, he was, and he still is our father. Okay, wait, wait, still wait, is. wait, 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 wait. Did he say <laughs> that I, I can't speak for everyone, only myself? How are you going to speak for a Blake statement, many of us? Um, that he's, still, he's mm -hmm. I can I can assure you he's not my father. Um, and I can say say, say for like ninety nine percent of people in the Jamaat still he's not their father. Like they, they have fathers in their lives. Um, I mean he, I mean I would like to know one person that I mean listen, I will gladly stand up next to my father and say this is my dad. This is yeah. my father. Yeah. I'm his son. And he raised me. Mm -hmm. He was the one who fathered me and raised me up. Me I will say man. that without a doubt. And I will, yeah, I will say it to anyone and I will fight anyone who tries mm -hmm. to say otherwise. Now, if you believe that Jilani is the one who took over as your spiritual and your, your, uh, your, and, act, and, and what is it, and your actual father took on that role, then say it out loud actually raise your hand or make a video or whatever you want to do and say yes jilani he, he's he's like my actual father he did he filled the role of an actual father in my life and then list the things that he did mm. i can tell you the things that my father did i never actually had for, for someone to teach me ayatul kursi you know how i learned ayatul kursi because i heard my father say it all the time after Salah. Mm. No one taught me the positions of Salah. You know how I learned that? Just watching my father pray. Mm -hmm. You know how I learned to shoot a basketball? My dad. Even though I don't have the same shooting form as him, at least he <laughs> <laughs> told me how to shoot. <laughs> you know? But in things, you know how I learned to actually catch a football, how to high point it, you know, catch it with your hands mm -hmm. away from your body? Mm -hmm. My dad taught me that. Uh, I can I can go into many many things. You know when I was about to get married. Do you know who I talked to and who told me, "Yes, son, this is a good idea." Or, "No, son, this is not a good idea." And told me, you know, what he thought about it. It was my father. Mm -hmm. These are the things that fathers do, right? You know, and, and many other things. When I went to get my driver's license, <laughs> when I went to get my permit, do you know who took me? It was my father. I can go on and on about different things. Do you know who kicked my behind when I was acting up in the house? It was my dad. Mm. Held me upside down by one leg. I remember it. I thought, man, I'm too big for this. But he was able to do it. You know. But the point is, there's many, 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 many things that a father actually does. Yes. Stand up here. Tell us what your father, what your father uh, Abuji did like that. Like mm -hmm. I just named some things. Yeah. Please, please, I, just, let's do it. Please, Joffrey, name some things that your father did for you, so they would get an idea. So my father made us Muslim. They converted when I was I mean, a baby. So the reason why we're Muslim is because of my father. My father mm -hmm. took us to the masjid. My father taught us about Islam. My father taught us martial arts. My father taught me how to play football. My father took me out and played catch with us. My father took me to my practices and all my games. My father bought, mm -hmm. provided for our entire family. My father mm -hmm. is the, my father is, if we want to go to Pakistani culture, my father is my Abuji. How many people for Tion Wei will actually call their father Abuji? Because that's a form of respect, right? In the Pakistani culture, like you, like the, the G is like a, like a, a, a like an honorary like title like Abuji Abuji it's like a why will you call your actual father Abuji? My father is re responsible for all these positive things in my life, right? That I still even though he's passed away, may Allah have mercy on him mm -hmm. and forgive him. Mm -hmm. I still look past and look at the examples and the words and the wisdom that that he 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 has given me, and I'm pretty sure for a lot of you TMOA people. It's exactly the same for you with your father. I'm pretty sure when tough times come, most of you are thinking about what your father told you. 
You're not going to like, well, Sheikh Jelani said in discourse number five, you know, at the 10 minute mark, that I should do this. You're thinking about the people that are directly involved in your lives. Mubarak Jelani didn't teach you how to make salat. Mubarak Jelani didn't teach you how to give salams, how to read Quran, how to do all these. Mubarak Jelani didn't pay for you to go to Hafiz school. Mubarak Jelani didn't do any of these different things that all these fathers in TMOA, which is something they should actually promote, but they're going to give Jelani the credit for it. It's it's really it's really kind of despicable when you think about it. You think about like the honor that like not only fathers but all parents should have. Mm-hmm. Like how many times in the Holy Quran does the law say, "Obey me, and respect your parents"? Obey me, believe Man. in me, respect your parents. Where does it say Kamil? It doesn't. Nowhere. Yeah, it doesn't say. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That. Allah, Allah says, "La ta'abudun illa Allah." Right after this, mm. don't worship anyone except for Allah. Mm. And then those closest to you. So it's like there's no Morshi Kamil in there. There's no your teacher, your sheikh. It's not, it's 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 way down the list. Even if it was a good teacher, a real legit sheikh, yep. he's not even closer to you as far as your loyalty than your neighbor. Mm-hmm. Your neighbor actually, Allah gives them rights before. Some random alleged uh, sheikh or teacher that you didn't even meet, right. let alone try trying to make him out to be your father. This is, a, yeah, this no, is I, right. so I, go ahead, move on. Go ahead, I, I would never give credit to someone uh, besides my father for things that my father did. Like Jamal says here, like a role model, my dad was my role model, right? My dad is the one that I watched growing up behave a certain way, move a certain way, be reserved, know when to speak, know when mm-hmm. not to speak. Um, I watched my father once again go to work every single day, not complain once. He would go go, go to work, come come home tired, still make time for his kids and his wife every single time. I watched my father mm. teach me how to change his attire, um, play mm. baseball, football. Like, yeah. uh, like, like <laughs> I grew up watching sports because of my dad. I like sports because of my dad. But like that, that's the that's the the things that I, I me cooking is because of my dad. Like I remember my dad used to make this curry and. That curry was so good. And that baby, you know what? One day I'm cooking with my dad. So one day my goal was like, hey, I'm going to have my dad say my food's good. My dad's my food good. So like, that's the thing. Mm. That's like, I didn't do it for Jelani or anyone else. Like, it's just not, he was my spiritual guide. Yeah. Or, uh, yeah. I mean, we could, we could go, we could literally just, just wing it the rest of the show, just talking about, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> praising our dads and talking about things. I mean, literally, I, I could tell you something that this might seem strange. This is, this is the last anecdote I'm going to give about <laughs> my dad because <laughs> my dad used to, he used to, he used to come in from work, all right, at about around 11 o'clock almost mm-hmm. every night. Like clockwork, he would come in around that time. Mm. He would come in. And all of us boys would be making all types of noise and playing and that. And as soon as he would open the door, we would turn the light off and pretend to be asleep. He knew we weren't asleep. <laughs> he would come in there. <laughs> he would come in there, open the door. He would call our names. He would call our names. Mubarak, brown Allah, Mustafa, uh, get up. And we wouldn't say nothing. We'd be quiet. And then he'd be like, all right, that's okay. I'm going to get y'all. And then he could have came in. He could have beat us. He, he, but he never did. He never did. He would always tell us, you know, he, he and then when we when he would as soon as he would close the door, we would bust out laughing. And be like, I know he would hear us, but he was like, he was he had yeah. so much yeah. uh, actually mercy on us a lot of times because we we weren't yeah, like we, we would cut up something. There's a lot of boys. I mean, yeah. just, it, 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 we were a lot of trouble, but he had a lot of mercy on us. But what he would do is he would come in. And he will always have a plate of food from one of the restaurants or something like mm-hmm. gyro and steak or, you know, something, something real good. Right. And he would put it in the fridge and every day we would get up and eat it. <laughs> we would eat it and leave the box. <laughs> we would, we, would, <laughs> we would eat his food and leave the box. Y'all so it, it, and li- listen, it actually dawned on me just now during this show. He was doing it on purpose. Just feed me. He was leaving that for us. <laughs> yes, he was leaving it for us. And he would he, he would act like he was mad in the morning. Be like, y'all eat my food, you know, yeah. whatever. And it's like, and we all wouldn't be saying that. But now it's like he was doing that every yeah, day. He was every doing day. That every day. day. Yeah. With the same thing over and over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I mean, these are the, these are the type of things that fathers do for their kids because I find myself doing things for my kids anyway. No one. 
You know, they think, oh, we got to do this. We got to do that. Abu might be mad. But knowing in my heart that they ain't in trouble, yeah. they're not going to they're not really going to get in trouble. Actually, I'm always going to have that mercy on them. But this is what a father does. These are the type of things that when you say my father, these are the type of things that should come to mind. Yeah. Not some rando in uh, in in another country. Don't do that to your father. You know, Jamal, if you didn't have a relationship with your father, if you don't know him, I'm sorry about that. Yeah. Um, if he's still alive, even if, whether he's Muslim or not, try to connect with him. And, you know, you can't make it for lost time, but still you can honor your father in that yeah, way. Yeah. But this is not the way to honor your father. This is wrong. Yeah. Yeah. And and in fact, like, and just to kind of hammer it home um, and just put some real flat out truths out there. Well, Barcelona was not involved in any of y'all lives. So you see, he, he like so if if your actual father was not involved in your life, neither was Mubarak Jelani. He didn't know your name. Mm -hmm. You never visited him. And here's the real test. He passed away, what, two, three years ago? If my father passed away and I was across the, uh, a different country, I would find some way to go to his genasa. Yep. None of y'all went to his genasa. What are you even invited? That means he's not, y'all really don't really care like y'all say y'all mm -hmm. do. Because if you did, you would have been doing everything. Like, I need to go to go to my father's, my abuji's, my physical and spiritual father's genasa. Y'all, y'all have it now. Some of y'all are visiting his grave and kissing and his grave, like y'all yeah. are so dedicated, just because it's a show. It's now showing off. And if you showed up, if you showed up to his house while he was alive, you wouldn't even be let in. If you yep. showed up unannounced, like right now, my father can show up to my house unannounced. Mm -hmm. He can walk right in. I can show up to my father's house. I mean, and walk right mm -hmm. in. Basically, yep. I don't. I don't need to like at my parents' house. I don't go and like have to get permission to get yep. a travel pass and this and that. No. It's my mom's house. Yep. I'm going to show up and they're not going to be like, what are you doing here? It's like, oh, great to see you, son. Mm -hmm. What's going on? You know, yep. when I go to, you know, visit my parents, it's, there's no like, uh, you know, what are you doing here? That, that's one uh, That's one staple, they, especially we're we're going to get to the African-American culture and just America, like any any culture. Your parents' house, is, no matter how old you are, your house, yeah. is your yep. house. You just walk in <laughs> yes. like, oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, this is the, even if they move, even if it's not the house you grew up in. Mom lives there. Dad lives live there. there. Yeah. Oh, hey. What's yeah. up? Right. Y'all can't do that with his house. Yeah. And then the last thing I want to say, and we can move on to the next topics, is when he mentioned the spiritual father. So if you're going to take anybody, if if just me to ask y'all and in the chat, type it in the chat. If any of y'all could take any spiritual father. Hmm. In all of existence, who would you this pick? This is tough, Joffer. This is tough. You know, I think maybe this is a tough one. I don't maybe know. Maybe the top um, one, Islam, you know, might be a good, uh, a good choice. Not on. some Pakistani guy. I don't know. Exactly. Come on, and y'all know more about, or you can know you more, know about more about Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam than you will ever know about this guy that had no involvement with you, did not know you, and did not care about you. Mm -hmm. So th this this idea of Mubarak Jelani actually being the father figure in TMOA is a complete farce, complete farce. Yep. Wait, and I have at a, one um, point again a question on the side here from my mother. Uh, what mm -hmm. kind of uh, abuji was shouting to his own children? Mm. Oh gosh, yeah. You, see, we try to get our whole show on this one time, <laughs> 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 and and uh, Mubarak touched on it a little bit is because like. Look at look at the situation they're in now. Did he even do his duty as a father in his death? Nope. Shafat told us point blank that he wasn't involved in his dad's, you know, Jamaat and teachings or whatever. And this is the most important thing to y'all. Y'all are told if you're not in the Jamaat, you're going to go astray. You're going to commit suicide. Surprise if you even live. You're barely even Muslim. You're not Muslim. Jelani's own son said, my father didn't even involve mm -hmm. us in this. <laughs> like, I mean, he excommunicated another. Well, I, you know, I, I, I guess that's, you know, I'll, I'll yeah. leave that alone. Yeah. But um, the thing is uh, that if you go down the line, down the list of, you know, uh, his, his own children, I mean, I mean, he, he's not winning any Father of the Year awards. Nope. They're not nominating him for nothing nope. as far as father of the year. No, 
Um, that that's not that's I, I mean that's that's clear yeah. for anyone to see. Yeah. And it was a even like a, a alarming to me because like Spot was like he's not involved and stuff. I remember my dad would take me to his his freaking job to do freaking carpentry construction anytime he got a chance to. I'll get paid of course, but still like my like, like, I know how power tools, mm -hmm. bang nails, metal framing, sheetrock, dial build houses, all I got well, I, let, like, <laughs> so let me on that point, let me ask you, like your father was in a certain business or trade, like he had expertise in yep. something, right? And just like my father had ex expertise in something, like my, my father was a well renowned martial arts teacher. Mm -hmm. Just by being in the same house, yep. we naturally how to do stuff, yeah. Knew how to, so what is what is allegedly Mubarak Jelani's trade or expertise? Um, Islam. Oh. Islam. Wendler? Supposedly. Hus hustler? Uh -oh. No, no, Islam. So if he's this great sheikh, when we'll get to like how he supposedly spread the dean across the whole entire world, right? Which one of his sons are the actual scholars that are recognized scholars in the Ummah? Noor. But they had to send Noor allegedly to Azhar. <laughs> so he Noor spent 20 years at the feet of his dad. And, then and doesn't even know yeah, enough yeah. to where he has to go and learn the basics. Yep. So, I mean, I mean, what was he doing? Yeah. And um, again, one of the quotes he says is giving us that Wabar Jelani supposedly gave them the role model of how a father, how to be a man, how to be a husband, how to be a father to your children, how to be an imam of your household. However, we should know that in the Holy Quran, Allah says, there has certainly been for you in the messenger of Allah, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, an excellent example for anyone whose hope is in Allah and the last day and who remembers Allah often. Your role model, all of our role models as Muslims, starts with Rasulullah. So you should, the natural thing would be like, he showed us how to follow Rasul. He gave us an example of how to follow Rasul Sallallahu or something that connects it back to the source. You know, but it's it's all malarkey, it's it's all bull crap. And the next uh, wait, thing that he kind wait, of wait, wait, wait. Wait, go ahead. This man yeah. said he taught us how to be a husband, right? And a man. Let me just ask y'all here. All right. <laughs> are y'all ever are y'all ever offering your wife to some other dick? <laughs> that's not how, exactly. that's not how you be a man or husband. I can tell you that for sure. So listen, Jamal, like if you agree with that, more power to you. <laughs> but but that's exactly. definitely not how you be a man or a father or a husband. Type it in the chat, share it, share it, share it. For those who know. Type in the chat of if, is there anything of Mubarak Jelani's example that you would actually want to follow? And, and hold up, let me, let me, let me. <laughs> okay, so if he taught you how to be a, a father, I think we covered that. Like mm -hmm. he, like that, that, that's not okay. Yep. How to be a husband? Do we have any like audio or video or anything where his wives are talking about how wonderful he was as a husband? Nope. I don't know of any, but we do have evidence of these wives. We we have evidence that it's pretty clear that as far as taking care of the duties of a husband, uh, yeah. There, 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 there was room. There was room for improvement. Let, lots of room for improvement. Let me say that. Let's let's put it. Let's just sum it up. Was that we have lots of evidence that shows that none of his wives were happy in any sense of a mar how a marriage would make a woman happy, mm -hmm. financially, physically, emotionally, nothing. And that's why you see examples of like after he passed away, you now see them smiling. You now see them enjoying life. It's very evident, and just and we're, and, and we're trying to be we're trying to be very 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 respectful here. Yes, um, but no, no. What? How? I, explain how. As a husband, he showed you how to be a husband. What are you doing as a husband? That's a, that that is like he did mm -hmm. as a husband. Mm -hmm. And see if your see see if your wife stays with you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <nah. laughs> it ain't happening. It's not, not America. Not gonna happen. It ain't happening here. <laughs> um, and just to kind of cap it off, Allah says in the Holy Quran, call them by the names of their fathers. It is more just in the sight of Allah 
But if you do not know their fathers, then they are still your brothers in religion. This is in uh, Surah 33, Ayah 5. And we should all know this, that as Muslims, we do not refer to anybody as our father except for our actual mm -hmm. fathers. It's different for little kids that may grow up in situations where like, they don't really understand who the real dad. But we do not disown our fathers and take someone else as our father you know, you can say, Harry's a role model, role model. He's my father figure. But to say that he's actually our father, you know, Rasul Sallallahu said, whoever claims knowingly to belong to someone other than his father will be denied paradise. He also said, whoever claims to belong to someone other than his father will be cursed by Allah. The angels and all the people and Allah will not accept any deeds or excuses from him on the day of judgment. These are both these are both Sahih Hadiths and, and Muslim and Bukhari. So we have to be very careful when we're starting to spread these types of ideas of someone actually being our father. Yeah. And it's it's you know, it's it's one thing if you are in a situation. Um, it's, it's like I give an example. We used to all go and work with my uh, with my dad selling stuff, selling clothes and and stuff. Um, and all of his sons would be there mm -hmm. and then a few of the other boys from the land would be there like with us or whatever we would say abu abu this that and other so much that they would just inadvertently like call my dad abu like <laughs> yeah. calling him for for something or whatever right. so they i mean it was like they they were not saying that hey this is my dad it's just like that's what he's being called and so mm -hmm. that's what he's going to answer to pretty quickly or whatever to get his attention yeah so something like that is 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 not what we're saying you know for, but or for someone to literally be like, if someone came and said, hey, young man, where's your dad at? You say, yeah, this is my father right here. You know, uh, no, <laughs> you shouldn't say this. Like, yeah. You know, you can do that, you know. And I've I've had so. people, heard people, multiple people in TMOA actually straight up deny their fathers and claim that, no, this is my real father, you know. So it's really sad situation. So next thing I want to talk about, and I'll put this quote up here. And it relates to this idea that he tried to, to put in his in his in his video about how Mubarak Jelani's teachings are spreading across the globe. No. And they're going to permeate. He says his teachings are going to permeate any and every space. Uh, no, I would challenge you, Jamal, to take the teachings of your father, right? Your Habuji and go to your Ashari teachers and present to oh. them. Present to them in Egypt the, the teachings of Barjolani that you believe in. Well, let me let me provide this quote because I got a rebut. It's right from his the horse's okay. mouth. Um, he says, "Okay, so here we go." He says, "Here in Egypt, Amr." Oh, here we go. Uh -huh. <laughs> we have encountered quite a few people at El Azhar Sharif and many of the masjids here as well. Before Shah Sahab's teachings, they didn't know much. Now they were actually able to convey the meetings, the meanings of Shasab's teachings. No, no, you, you didn't. So, so Jamal, what you're saying is that at Al Azhar, which is one of, if not the oldest, Islamic university in the world, <laughs> they got people running around that don't know the meanings of Quran. Like they, they don't know, they don't know how to convey it, and 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 they just found, were able to do that when Mubarak Jelani, who's someone who does not speak Arabic, is not fluent in the Quran, doesn't even know the Quran like that, and badly speaks, you know, in his discourses, hardly even intelligible. And they were able to then, all of a sudden, after years, centuries of scholarship <laughs> about teaching the sciences of Islam, and these people just didn't know. Well, and then somehow <laughs> you pop in a grainy VHS tape of <laughs> Mubarak Jelani, and all of a sudden they're able to convey all this. Do you realize how uh, delusional that is? Well, let's hear what he says. Let's hear his response. He says, the people would come and sit with us, and we would convey and translate it into Arabic. Once they received what Shasa was saying, they were literally conveying it in their Juma kutbas. No, 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 no. So <laughs> to take it off of what Mubarak said, 
<laughs> if Mubarak Yiladi Shasad, as he, as he said, has here, was this, he would already be speaking in Arabic. It, it wouldn't have to be translated from, from Urdu to Arabic. Like, oh, <laughs> yeah, if they're conveying, if they're conveying it into Shiva Kumbh, Allah, Allah help us, Allah help us. Allah, Allah help us. <laughs> well, do you know? Do you know how? Like, because we know people that go to Azhar. We actually know people that in the, that the circles that Jamal would actually hang out in, right? They actually know him by name, right? They know him, and we're not going to get into other details. But this absolutely was not happening. Absolutely was not happening because just think about it. As hard as a, like Mubarak said, world renowned institution, mm -hmm. and if multiple teachers and imams and sheikhs at Al Hazar University are all of a sudden quoting and pushing the teachings of Mubarak Jalani, guess what? This would start spreading. Like, wait, who is this guy? Mm -hmm. Students will start asking. People will start inquiring. Let me get that discourse. This this sheikh because this is how students of knowledge do. Whenever the sheikh or teacher quotes somebody, they write down his name and they start looking up who is he, where's his works, where's his books, let me study him. Where has that happened? It absolutely has it. not happened at all. This is a farce or it's a gross exaggeration because I'm going to tell you because I know and I, I've been there. I've been at his house. Like he actually, in the video, he talks about a Hafiz. I know the Hafiz. I met him. The Hafiz is also like he basically uses. I'm. In a, he he can correct me if I'm wrong, but this is my theory. All these different instances that he provides in that video, he's talking about one person, one person, and he says in the video that the Hafiz was just a Hafiz and he didn't know nothing else about Islam. However, he was also teaching them Quran, and when I was over there, he taught me how. Jamal was telling me how he was trying to recruit him to Jelaniism. Jelaniism. <laughs> Literally, Jelaniism. Okay? So, this story might be true with this one, as Jamal put it, ignorant Hafiz that didn't know Islam, and maybe he used a quote from Jelani while he was talking to Jelani disciples. Allah knows best. But as far as trying to extrapolate that and say, this was happening at, at, at Azhar University... That is a that's a gross exaggeration. And the last thing I want to say about this is if all these people had to quote Mubarak Jelani, they didn't know Islam, they didn't know the meanings of the Holy Quran, why did Mubarak Jelani send you there? <laughs> I mean, listen, let me tell you something. No one has able to successfully stay awake through a whole Jelani discourse, let alone actually share it with someone. <laughs> And they and they actually take it. It's not that that did not happen. No, no, no one actually looked at that discourse and was like, man, I got to I, I got to use this in my I, I'm a professor at al Azhar. I'm teaching this throughout the curriculum that mm -hmm. we've been used that that actual scholars in, in big ulama and shiuk of Islam have put together and detailed and, 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 and compiled the curriculum and, and refined it and perfected it in a way that will be best to teach the students. All of a sudden they hear. They they were ap actually able to stay awake through a Jelani discourse and was like, this is to throw everything out. Let me use this. I mean, I mean, think about that. I mean, you've been to the retreats when they would put the discourses on. <laughs> Do you know how many people were told stand up? Who, remember, the, there would be someone going around actually hitting people talking about stand up, yeah. stand up because they were asleep. Yeah, people were literally just falling asleep. Exactly. I mean, it, come on now, y'all. Exactly. The people who know. They know I'm telling the truth yeah, exactly. because it was a joke. Like, they're like yo, yo. And, and we would laugh at the people who would have yeah. to stand up mm -hmm. until you got caught sleeping and would have to stand yep. up. We'd be like, all right, yeah, <laughs> now, you got I told this, uh, this story with my, doing my, my interview uh, for the Hawkeye Show about how my father bought <laughs> a, a discourse from July. It, it was after Juma. <laughs> they were like, yo, you, you, have to, you have to watch the discourse. It's important, right? My boo came home, put it on the TV. Five minutes went by. He was gone. Oh man! Well, let me let me relay this. And for those for those of us that are, are attending, you know, the student knowledge program um, at AMAU or any other student knowledge program, like one of the first things you learn is like the etiquettes of students of knowledge, especially when you're learning and in that setting. So I want to convey this story that he had in his video where he talks about 
one of the students that they were at El Azhar and they had to go to the office of the professors. So he's going to all the sheikhs. This is the, the sheikhs, the teachers at El Azhar University. And this student goes in there and he literally starts lecturing <laughs> the teachers about fit. No. This is after he allegedly watched one of Mubarak Jelani's discourses. Okay. And then he goes on to explain how the student said, wait, he said, uh, he said, I need to, he said, I need to go back and study everything because of what he said, talking about what Mubarak Jelani said. And then because he said Mubarak Jelani and the, the, the student was quoting him is that Sheikh Jelani said, if you're going to practice Dean, then you have to follow a madhab. So he went into allegedly this student, he's a student, he's ignorant. Mm -hmm. Right. That's what students are. You're, when you become a student, you're attesting to like, I'm ignorant and I need to learn my dean from these teachers or professors or shakes, whatever it is. And he literally walks into the office, these offices and starts lecturing them about you guys need to learn how to teach fic because Mubarak Jelani said that you could only follow one mad <laughs> <laughs> They're like, this man's a heretic. What does he have going on here? I mean, like, how 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 silly is that? Like, you're going to walk into a university that actually teaches Islamic sciences. All the issues, all the masala, all these different things, they mm -hmm. teach them there. Mm -hmm. They discuss them. They go over them. They have different courses from 101 all the way to 401 to master's to PhD. They're all these things. And you mean to tell me, that's like walking into a uh, a police station and being like, you know, y'all gotta have guns, y'all y'all got you know or or you know what you you gotta have you gotta have lights on your cars or what like what are you talking about? I mean like it's a it's a thing where they'd be like, yo, get out of here. If you walked into Medina University or Al Azhar and you start talking about something related to you know where they have people who are masters in fit, mm -hmm. they're gonna be like from a random student. Who just happens to say, "Well, y'all got it," and they were like, "So what did they say to him?" Oh, you're right. Mubarak Jelani said that. Mm -hmm. I mean, they might. I mean, throw him out like Jazzy Jeff. I mean, literally out of the university. Like, get the heck well, out of going here. Going with your example is literally like this dude walked into the arena, Golden State Arena, like Steph, seen oh, Steph, yeah. seen seen Curry, seen Clay Thompson, seen Poole. It was like, listen, man, y'all need to feed the post. Y'all need to get it in the paint. <laughs> This is how you you're play never basketball. Gonna win. You're, you're <laughs> never going to win a championship yeah. shooting threes like this. You're never going to win a championship shooting threes. <laughs> like, I mean, get out of here. I mean, it's like you, to, to actually say it is one thing. Mm -hmm. to, to say it and not laugh immediately <laughs> is another. And for anyone to listen to him and think, oh, that, that, you know, that makes sense. I mean, I don't want to say that they're fools, but I mean, you're you you have to have some mental challenges, some serious mm -hmm. your mental capacity and your ability to process and rationalize information mm -hmm. is severely um, lacking because none of what he said made sense. It doesn't make sense on any planet, even in a comic book mm -hmm. or a, 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 a movie or something. They would literally be like, this is the cheesiest movie ever. Yeah. This movie doesn't make sense. I'm not watching it. No one would even believe it if it was made up. It is made up. And that's why we don't believe it. <laughs> and just think, like, <laughs> we, we, we know. So, allegedly, these people all the way in Egypt at Al Azhar University are now just, everybody's accepting Mubarak Jalani's teachings. Meanwhile, none of them have joined the Jamaat. Mm -hmm. None of them have done nothing. And no, it just seemed to skip Pakistan. India and all the surrounding places of where Mubarak Jalani actually lives, but all the scholars over here are like, oh yeah, Egypt, yeah. yeah, let's start quoting him. Let's give our, let's yeah. give his discourses in our Holy Quran class. No, it's 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 it's, it's, a, not, it's, a, it's, it's not. not and as as Mubarak said, because yes. I remember Mubarak posted this video of a, um an actual sheikh, a student, a, a teacher who who passed away. There was like a hundred thousand people there at, at his janaza, mm. right? So. Yep. If his yeah. teachings had made the impact in Atar, and it would have spread throughout the Islamic world, all right? So that means that yeah. he would have been if there. It, yeah. If it permeated yeah. the world as, and, and continents or whatever, 
that Janaza would have been standing mm-hmm. room only. Mm-hmm. There was more flies there than people yeah. from TMOA, as we you said. You remember the video? And they, there was people walking around the background. That means his teachers didn't yeah. even put the little shrine <laughs> area that he lived in. His own neighborhood. Like, oh, he died? All right, whatever. Yeah. I'm going to go no, visit no, over no, here. No, 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 no. No, because, uh, I mean, he would have, I mean, just the the, the impact. I, I mean, I, I don't know. I, 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 I don't want to say. I know people in this city mm-hmm. that are just regular people. And if they passed away, they would have probably 100 times the, the amount of people. And they're not even sh- yeah. shiuch. They're just, I mean, they're just people who just benefited the community here and there and, you know, we were just around. People would show up. Non-Muslims. You know? uh, so, Muslims, yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, it, no, no, no. His, his teaching didn't permeate, permeate anywhere because the, 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 you look at, and there was just another recent uh, uh, a sheikh or um, a scholar who passed away. And he was just in his area, just in his area. The people just in his area, his, his teachings didn't permeate the globe. They didn't permeate everywhere. He was just a scholar, a sheikh, a teacher in his local community and it was standing room mm. only line lines going around the building for people mm. just to come in and pay their respects or whatever so i mean no his per- she teaching didn't permeate anywhere as someone had mentioned um in the chat a while back like where is tmoap like where is the tmoa yep. in pakistan where's the where, where, where where's the the, the khalifa the administration the the shura council in yep. pakistan that's where he lives. That's his base. There isn't one there. Mm-hmm. It doesn't exist. It doesn't even exist. Literally, you can walk out of his house and not a soul is a TMO whatever, Pakistan or a Jelani follower or supporter or Jamaat mm-hmm. member in Pakistan. Yeah. No one. So, And you're saying they permeate it? I mean... Yeah. So this next one, it really relates to about he's trying to allege that Mubarak Jelani, like he established a whole village to raise children, whether they were children or young people or whether they were children as in new shahadas. People just came into Islam seeking guidance. I will challenge anybody to actually bring me one person that Mubarak Jelani actually made Muslim, actually Mm -hmm. took their shahada, gave them shahada. I bring me one person because everybody was already Muslim in Dar Islam. And how could you say that he 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 did that he's doing this? He's giving dawah, he's giving new shahadas when he literally said out his whole his, his mouth multiple times, we are not accepting new members. We aren't taking anybody new. Mm-hmm. If it's, it's just not true. And like as far as like raising children, you know, we where's the schools? Where's the schools on the lands? Where's the education system set up? Where's the Islamic education set up? There's nothing for the children. That's why when the children grow up, they leave. And are these the same children that he raised and set up these villages where he later said that 90% of the men in the Jamaat are committing adultery? Are these the same children that he raised? And and all like it's it's we have to stop with the, the blatant contradictions mm-hmm. on what's going on here with these people that are pushing this. Tim away propaganda. The blow beating. And plus, like, the whole saying t- takes it over. It's not even a July thing. It's a, a black thing. It's, 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 been, it's been a thing where, yeah, the whole community, the, the whole community you're in will raise, will raise you. So your aunties and uncles, the people that are next door, that's mm-hmm. that's the thing. That's not even a July thing. You got you just yep. took that from your actual community, your actual African-American community. Say, hey, this man did it to me. No. Yep. All right, let's see. The next, the next section is very interesting. And so he's, he says a quote and it kind of, he kind of ties it all together, but we're going to, we're going to really tie it together when we bring up the, the facts of the situation. So he says a quote where he says, I was looking for a gold coin and I actually found a whole chest of wealth. Mm-hmm. And gave okay? it all to Yolani. Yep. He found a whole chest of wealth, but I'm wondering was, the chest of wealth empty when he found it, and then he filled it with his 10%, 20%, 30%. Mm-hmm. I wonder how that worked. But then he later says, and this was very, very, uh, very interesting. He says, the history about Al Islam in America is not from these Arabs. You know, they the Arabs that set up these quote unquote 
halal meat stores, he says, or these masjids, he says, built on haram funds to scam other people <laughs> out of their money and make a fortune. Who does that actually sound like? It sounds like his father. <laughs> just just like uh, uh, um, Uncle Aldim uh, told us, and the, the people, those people who went over to Pakistan in the beginning, those first groups who went over there, and they know, and some of those founding fathers there who, who are, uh, they're, 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 they're not saying it out loud, but they know that what I'm about to say is the, is the truth. And that is that he lived in basically a trailer park mm -hmm. at first, right? He was in a, he he was living in a rundown mm -hmm. slum, basically. He was not living high on the hog like when he died. So how did he go from living basically, I mean, with a bunch of poor mm -hmm. people with little literally next to nothing? They went over and visited him. And for those people that tried to deny this, go ahead. Tell us, and we will retract the statement. Tell us those people who went over there, the first groups who mm -hmm. went over there and saw how and where he was living. How is it now that he has not only basically a mansion, but who knows all the other properties that he acquired? Mm -hmm. How? What was he doing? How did he do it? It's a lie that they said, well, you know, I, that story, that a tale that they would tell, say, oh, Buddha is wealthy. He's yeah. wealthy. He is yeah. now. He is now. Uh, because of all the money, but I mean, and he, maybe he was wealthy, but his living situation would not have given you that yeah. indication. So he went from he went from that treasure chest of, of wealth uh, that you had, you gave it to him. Yeah. Um, and so he, he the actual scamming and becoming rich of setting up fake, you know, massages and things, Islamic, you know, using Islam to siphon wealth away from people, use it for your own uh, benefit. That is the that Jelani is the blueprint yep, for that. Exactly, one hundred percent. And it, he says this is something that can't be conveyed. It can't be quantified. It is something that has to be understood. Well, it has been quantified. They're fighting over millions of dollars of inheritance. They're fighting over properties. They're fighting over literally gold, effing bars, gold <laughs> bricks. That's what they're fighting. Like they, it can be quantified. It can be conveyed, and it is understood that Mubarak Jelani has scammed multiple generations mm -hmm. out of a vast amount of wealth that if it would have stayed in their families, in their communities, that the people that are currently living in decrepit conditions have been stunted for multiple generations would have been the most powerful Muslim group or organization in the United States if like what? How how many organizations would have had millions and millions of dollars over forty years? I mean, you just imagine the progress of the of the Jamaat if Mubarak Jelani was not there, scamming them out of their funds. Crazy. So, hello, yeah. First of all, there's a in Richmond. <laughs> There are brothers that that fund masjid. These brothers are like doctors and businessmen. They're not, they're not using using haram. Like there, there was a brother who, who donated like a million dollars for a masjid mm -hmm. to be built in Richmond. Like and he, he had it from just like being a doctor for like 20, 40 years. Like that, <laughs> the stuff these people say. I mean, uh, I, I mean, he, he 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 that that thing where we 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 do have masjid in this country that are funded by. Muslims who run liquor stores yep, and things yep, like that. that. It, it, that is something yep. that happens. So we can I mean, that 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 does happen. But uh, his shake is, is 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 in the bunch with him. I mean, doing do, doing similar things. I mean, setting up IQOU. You know, these campuses, call them campuses, and 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 uh, collecting money for for you know, oh, this is for the students who come over there to take care of the people or whatever, and all the re different reasons why the ten percent. And then the 20 percent, 35 percent, 100 percent was said why people mm -hmm. needed to pay it. You know, come to find out, just getting rich. So, I mean, it's, it's no mm -hmm. different. I mean, it's the same thing. It's haram for them to uh, for, for him to scam the people out yeah. of their money. It's haram for the people to set up liquor stores and and then uh, sell money as Muslims and quick, then and then give it to them. Question. Message. What's worse, making money? 
from alcohol or making money from shirk? <sighs> yeah, but tough question here, Joffrey, you know? Mm. Oh, almost nine. Um, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's deep when you think about it. I, I, it's real deep. I, um, well, um, shirk, because the shirk Allah will not forgive mm -hmm. if a person um, yeah. dies on it. So I would think that that's worse because that's a bigger sin. Um, uh, sh uh, you know, if a person you know, sold alcohol their whole life and they died. I mean, they, a lot could wipe mm -hmm. that out. You know, a lot has not, a lot has not said that he will not yeah. forgive that. Now, maybe that person, you know, could have caught later to Qadr and, and prayed all night. He could have, you know, I say, oh, as people always mean, maybe, he, maybe he fed a cat right before yeah, he died yeah. or whatever, all types of things that he could have done. But the person who, who, you know, made their money off of shirk, I mean, especially if they are, Believing this year. I mean, I don't know how they're going to win that one. So one of the things he says, and this really gets down to, because he says he does sneak in a few true statements inadvertently, is like what he actually did teach Tam white people is he taught them how to serve mm -hmm. him. Yep, obedience. Yep. Everybody went to Pakistan to serve him, mm -hmm. whether it was cut his toenails, massage his feet, clip his hair, trim his beard, whatever other crap that nobody should be doing for another man especially if you're a non-mahram man um this is what they're doing they're serving him tea you know chai roti fried chicken all the different things that he he liked this is what they're doing they were he taught them how to serve him so that's really actually a true statement that he made he didn't teach them about islam he didn't teach them you know the correct deen the basics of islam he taught them how to become servants and slaves to him as, as his words that the actual TMA people, African-Americans or Muslims in America are actually slaves. He, so he does, he goes into a bunch of statements about Sheikh Jelani's teachings and I'm, I'll just kind of like go through them a little bit. Um, and then we can kind of comment on them. One of the quotes that he says is um, Shah Sahib, his teachings are haq. You can't cover it. It's going to spread, he says. He says, we know, we know that he would never lie. Do you, though? We know that he would never lie, which, you know, we'll, we'll comment on in a second. He says, he says for himself, he came to this Jamaat and learned real Islam from Jump Street, from the beginning. Why did you go to Azhar, Jamal, if you learned real Islam from Jump Street? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, the the part where he said we know he would never lie that uh, that he's the the the, the Sheikh of Sheikhs mm -hmm. and he's the head of the Qadri order and all that. I mean, uh, this Qadri order and all the tariqas, this really actually is not even. This is something. Invented anyway. This there, there was no tariqas and any of that stuff in the time of Rasulullah and the time of Sahabas or whatever. But that's I mean we, we can put that aside. He's not the <laughs> leader and never was the leader of the Qadri order. If he told you that, lied. he lied. I mean, he lied a bold faced flat out mm -hmm. lie. And you're saying he would never lie? That 100. percent We can yep. verify it. We can we we can verify it. You can type into Google. <laughs> you can call up your 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 local chapter of the country order to ask them who's the leader of this joint. They will tell you. They won't say Mubarak Jelani. They will say we don't even yep. know him. If they do know him, I mean, they'll be like, yeah, we kicked him out, or he yep. got you know he was part of some you know uh, low yep. level joint. He wanted to be the leader or something like that of just his little local little chapter or whatever it was. But he was not, has never been. He's never been in the running. He's never been even considered mm -hmm. as the leader of the Qadri order. This is a mm -hmm. lie. And you know it, actually. Yep. Uh, Jamal, you know that's yep. a lie. So, I mean, you, you, you got to rectify that with a law. I mean, yeah. Rasul Sallam said that, you know, the, the people who are, um, and I'm trying to, I, I don't want to misquote the hadith, but basically, liars are not, up, not they're, they're, they're not from mm -hmm. us. Just, just telling lies like this. So maybe you, maybe someone told you, okay, he's the leader of the Qadir order, and you just ran with it, you just believed it. Okay, now, now you know, he's not the leader. He never was. Mm -hmm. 
And if he told you that, he's a liar. Well, so what else is he lying? Well, he's to you lying about? about. He said he talks to Allah directly. We know that's a lie. He yeah. said he he lied multiple times. Like, yeah, Mahdi's gonna be here next week around four p.m. How many yeah. times did he tell you about the Mahdi coming up? <laughs> it's, these are lies, man. These are lies, straight up lies. Either he's either pick. He has to. No matter where you go down these paths of Tiamway, like, and this is for anybody that's like in conversation with Tiamway members, trying to guide them or whatever. You don't have to work that hard. Just let them walk down whatever road they want to walk down, and it's always a contradiction. So if you bring up like, hey, he lied about the Mahdi, then they might, you know, go down the road like, oh, he didn't lie. He was he just was mistaken. Oh, OK. He was mistaken. Yeah, he was mistaken. Oh, he made a mistake. Yeah. OK. So how's he a perfect Marshid? Like it, no matter where they go, it's a contradiction. You know, so like he's a liar. We've proven this time and time again. And to say that we know that he would never lie. No, you don't. One, J Jamal. So speaking specifically to you, you do not know Mubarak Jelani. Mm -hmm. And, okay, if he would never lie, was everything in that whole t t uh, Islamic Post expose condemning you and damning you and all these different, the whole article he made about you, Jamal, was all of that the truth? Then why are we even listening to you talk about your father who condemned you in a whole spread in his no personal newspaper? <laughs> this stuff is laughable. I mean, it's really ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, that, that that's heavy, man. I mean, it's like he said he never learned any watered down stuff. Mm. Never learned any watered down stuff. Everything I have learned was what Shai said. I hope I'm not. I'm not, I'm not oh, I didn't boy, mean to jump good. ahead here, but it just, <laughs> it just um, I said that Shai, that Shai sub conveyed to our elders and what they have conveyed to us. <laughs> so. Your elders are confused about the validity and are scrambling for sources to help them find proof for what Jelani conveyed mm -hmm. to them. Did you know that? They don't know what Jelani conveyed to them. They don't even understand. So you should know that whatever Jelani conveyed to your elders, they don't really have a clue about it. And then they conveyed it to you. You're lost as I mean, you should you should not have mm -hmm. said that because your elders don't know anything. They don't know anything. They're being led in TMA. The people who actually lead these elders are kids most mm -hmm. of the time. K two was twenty whatever years old. You got people like uh, what's the guy's name Shaban and these like people who are like they get these positions. These the the elders for the most part they're not even. They're not even um, leaders mm -hmm. like that. They're not even pushing the the this whatever they learned from Jelani forward like that. They mm -hmm. don't even know. Exactly. And th then he goes into a whole thing with this very close to Shiite type of belief that, you know, all of Islam is like basically through Ahlubayt. At one point, he says, Allah provided us with the descendants from his blessed family that keep us on the straight path, that keep us in the middle. We don't go too far right. We don't go too far left. No, y'all all the way left. Yep. All the way left. <laughs> because we. And this is something that we have to keep on emphasizing, is that literally, Jamal, the whole entire world will refute y'all beliefs. The whole entire Islamic world. Mm-hmm. So you have on one, one side, which is the majority of the Ummah, like 99% of the Ummah, does not believe in the shirk belief of the seven sultans. So they'll refute it like that. Not, that's not Islam. Then the ones that do have their own sixth and seventh sultan. So they will also refute you and say, no, he's a fraud. This guy's actually the sixth and seventh sultan, which is like five or six of them floating out there. So... How are you in the middle of all that? If we did like one of those, like, you know, like a histogram things, y'all are all the way down at the left where this like the line is basically touching like zero. Y'all are, that's what they call outliers. You are an extreme outlier, such an outlier. When you're doing statistics, you say, we're not even going to consider that. Yep. You yeah. Exclude you're, it. you're excluded. <laughs> you're excluded, excluded all, all, all together. I mean, it's literally not a single 
person besides the African Americans living in uh, um, America will tell you if you can find one person that's not one of the the people from TMOA that will say Mubarak Jelani is the sixth sultan and he's my Murshid. His the own perfect family guy. won't even find say me that. that. Yep. His own family <laughs> yeah. won't say yeah. that. It's only y'all. And guess what? No one in the history of Islam, no one believes what you believe. No one in the history of Islam will ever believe what you believe after this current generation of people mm -hmm. dies out. It won't be carried mm -hmm. on. It's over, yeah. actually. You believe something that it's like a it's like a blip, a small dot in the history, and like yo, in the history books, yo, there was an actual cult group back in the late, you know, nineties, you know, early two thousands that fizzled yep. out, you know, uh, before twenty thirty that believed that somewhere in the press are like, wow, that's wacky. <laughs> yep. Anyway, moving, moving on. on. <laughs> I mean, that's that's what it's yep. going to be. So, and then he gets into this thing. He, he talks about it was mentioned by Dorodana Begum, his his wife, and Malika Begum. I don't know who that is. Our elders were making dua. Ya Allah sends us somebody. So this is proof. Like this, I want I want us to walk through this psychology, and we I'm gonna I want to apply it in different situations. This psychology he has of this is proof. So first issue is that he says Dordana Begum and Malika Begum. Who are or, not yeah. elders, by the way, mm -hmm. relayed that the elders were making dua. So, first of all, for elders should be saying, Yeah, we were making specific dua. We were going to our salats and we we're all making dua that we wanted a guide. Like, this was like a whole community thing. All of the Dar al Islam was asking for a guide. Okay. Y'all, Allah, send us somebody. So, this is proof that Allah wanted and still wants good for all of us because He keeps us in the company of the Sufi. Let's follow yeah. this logic. Basically, mm -hmm. I'll break it down. What he's what he's thinking is that because someone made dua and someone showed up, that this is proof that it's correct. So let me make a dua. Yalla, I want to have sex. <laughs> I walk outside and lo and behold, I see a female. This is proof that I'm supposed to have sex with that female. <laughs> this is the dumbest argument you can make to, to justify Mubarak, Mubarak Jelani as proof that this was, oh, he's the answer to our duas. The first fraud that comes up, Man, he's the answer. It's a lie also. It's a lie. Think about this. So these people who didn't know, they didn't have mm -hmm. a guide. So they did, they did not know. They were not knowledgeable of what even yep. a guide was. But they're asking for one. That's number one. Mm -hmm. No. People ask for a law to guide them. Yeah. It's in Al Fatiha, yeah. right? Because usually when people become Muslim, they learn Al Fatiha, they learn the English, they learn it in their own language, they know what it says. So they say, and Allah tells us to say, does Allah tell us to say, send us a Sufi guide, send us a perfect Marshid? Allah sent Rasulullah for yes. that, you <laughs> idiot. I mean, oh, <laughs> I, I mean listen, I, I mean, Rasulullah's job is to guide. Allah sent him to guide everyone. You follow his mm -hmm. teachings. Not any person. Everybody is funneling you. They should be. Everybody is funneling you to Rasulullah And he gives you the information so that uh, you can die in a way and upon the right belief that Allah will be pleased with and yes. will accept. So this is a yeah. lie. It doesn't even make logical sense for people who don't know. They don't have, they don't even know what yeah. they don't know. And they're saying, send us a guide. How would they even know that the guide that showed up was the proper mm -hmm. one? Did Allah didn't say, this is the right one. You may do it. Here it goes. <laughs> no, this is a lie. Do you, do you <laughs> this is what? a lie. They didn't you, say like, that. When, we, when I'm thinking yeah. about it, too, because we know the history of this, right? There was already teachers from overseas here in America teaching them. They were already, like, learning. Yep. So that's one. Two. If this was what y'all were asking for, and it was just such so clear that this was our guide, why was it a hostile takeover? Why did he need to, to secure the leaders of the security team of the Dar al Islam and basically force Imam Yahya to give up leadership? 
It's it, the whole thing is bull crap. It's straight. Like there's so many holes in this. We know the truth. The truth is out there. We've been putting it out there. It's it's. There's so many different evidences. There's there's elders now speaking up and telling the true story. Even people that were part of the coup, speaking specifically about you know Uncle MJ, who's come forward and apologized for his actions and said he was wrong. And he's apologized for mis uh, being a part of misleading the people, but he himself was also misled. It's a total farce. People in not people in the Jamaat, maybe there was some people asking for like a guide or a shake or whatever, but this was not just a thing that the Dallas line like, we, we need someone to guide us. We need someone to guide us. Y'all, please send us a guide. They're getting up, making do a canoe, asking for a guide. Like, how oh, you asked for rain. Y'all, we need a guide. We need a guide. No, this was not happening. <laughs> Barjlani showed up out of Bye, the, the, the out of the shadow of the toilet bowl of Asia and basically <laughs> took over ignorant African Americans. That's exactly what happened. Mm -hmm. Actually, actually, some ignorant African Americans who really actually wanted the power, they explained it. It was over the, the Saudi mm -hmm. money, okay? <laughs> some of that yep. Saudi money, <laughs> you know, okay? So they wanted, it, it was a thing over some money, some power, some control, and Jelani was supported as a way to get that, and it just, the joke got away from him. The people, they, they literally tried to use him you know, to, 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 to take over and then the joint went rogue and then they lost their power because after that they tried to then take the joint over him and they got they, yep. they got caught. They got yep. exposed. So, I mean, you can't act like y'all don't know this history. If y'all don't, you know, go back. Well, actually, did those tapes get deleted where we covered that joint? We might have lost knows. those, those yeah. videos. But um, anyway, point is that, yeah, this this <laughs> this, this joint is, is, is a lie. It is a complete lie. So from from top to bottom. So he gets into this, and I don't know if people know this. This is kind of a um, it's a poem that they they say in the Jamaat. It's like Dinas Hussein, Shah Hussein, and and whatever. He 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 basically says, and he overrides the poem, right? Because mm -hmm. basically it's saying the Dean of Islam is Hussein. It's a poem. Basically, the Dean of Islam is represented by Hussein and his sacrifice for in Karbala, and he says. The only modification I say is that Dean, the religion of Islam, is Sheikh Said Mubarak Ali Jelani. You changed everything. <laughs> that's literally you changing the whole thing. I mean, that's, a, <laughs> that's like that's like you saying I'm going to the store. I said, listen, I'm not going to change anything about that. You know, uh, I'm going home. That that means you change everything. The actual subject literally changes yeah. everything. So you took. The and and let's let's not let's not skip over the fact that this is a daggone random per Persian Shiite shirt poem. poem. It's not a hadith, yep. a shirt poem. It's not even a hadith. It's not an ayat Quran. This man, in all this time, he's talking about how he he never learned any watered down Islam. He learned true Islam from junk. Blah blah blah. Hasn't even been able to say one. Hadith, he hasn't been able to say one ayah of Quran oh, so well, far. Yeah, we'll, and we'll the get first, there. Mm -hmm. and yeah, but, but the thing is, here he is, and this is what you said. And he actually had a prepared yep. statement, he had paper in front of him that he wrote it down. So he sat down, thought through what he was going to say in the sequence that he was going to say it. He had it written down, it was a full sheet. I think it might have been more mm -hmm. than one sheet. So when you tell me. That if you think, okay, I'm about to give a lecture, a talk, a khutbah, a, you know, some sort of uh, admonition to the people. What do you start with? What do you build your foundation of what yes. you're going to say as far as Islam is concerned on? You start with the Quran. You start with the Hadith. Then you, you go with some statements of the scholars, whatever. But you're, you're going to base it around what Allah said, what Rasul Islam said. You come out the, you know, from, you know, out your back pocket with a crusty behind egg on Persian shirt and, let me ask you, and then change let me the ask joke. You, if I ask anybody, you guys type it, people that are listening, type it in the chat. If I asked you, what is the foundation of La ilaha illallah? So, Mubarak, Amr, what is the foundation? What would you think the foundation is of la ilaha illallah is what is what's the foundation well for starters there is no god but a law all right um so so when you 
So Allah is the yeah, Allah is the 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 the, the the foundation right. or the you talking about like the like the, the subject yeah. of that. Okay, well, however so, you want, yeah, exactly. So lay la is very self evident. Lay la Allah, Allah, Allah's the subject, Allah's the foundation. There's no only one God, Allah's the God. That's that's the foundation. So if I came to you and said Hussein is the foundation of La ilaha illallah, you're you're playing around with shirk. Like, why? This is what this poem comes from, and this is what he's using, but now he's saying. He replaced Hussein and put Mubarak Jelani's name in this poem. Like this, this is what exactly what we're talking about. We're talking about like, oh, he learned true Islam and all that, you know. And he, he gets into we'll, we'll get into it probably pretty soon. But he talks about the se the seven sultans and all this. You, it's it's about time. Like Mubarak said, how many years have you been over there in Egypt, allegedly studying at Al Azhar? And, and we and I'm not saying like. Jamal's not an ignorant person. I've had conversations with him. He's very intelligent. But what happens is, and we've seen this before in other cases where people that we know that are educated like Islamically and like they can go to other Islamic circles, have conversations, they're well respected. But then when they come back into these TMOA circles, they they literally lose their minds and start saying shirk, bidah, and all these different things to impress these TMOA people. So he's smart enough to know that, oh, this poem is popular in the Jamaat. I'm going to find a way to work it in here, and maybe I'm going to get a bunch of you know likes and thumbs up or whatever on this video. That's exactly what he was going for without even thinking, like, oh, this is actually this is not a hadith. Um, it's not Quran. Uh, it's actually a little bit like shirkish and like, like it's actually from Shiites. Like this is, you know, come on. Come on, Jamal. You got to do better than that. Like you – we put this – as scholars in quotes, because in TMOA, people recognize you as a scholar. You, you, you and Hassan Ali, who did not graduate from Ezhar, came to America in Eden, put on the Ezhar kufis. Like you're, you're, I'm Ezhari. You have on your Facebook profile Jamal El Ezhari. You did not graduate, along those best if you attended, but people recognize you as a scholar, as an authority of an Islam. You have to do better because you're doing a disservice to the people. And if you're not a scholar and you don't consider yourself a scholar, then tell the people, I am not a scholar. So they know. They know that they can't take stuff from you. Like I tell, I tell people all the time, I am not a scholar. I am a low-level student student of knowledge trying to learn my dean for myself. And people say, oh, he's just a low-level student. Well, guess what? It's enough to totally destroy 40 years of teaching <laughs> of your shake. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that, that, you know, and and it's not even about being low level, any level, whatever, what whatever level you are, whatever information you have, you you can yep. you convey it. So I mean, he's conveying, and maybe he was sincere in what he conveyed, but I mean, it is, I mean, it's so far out. So with the information that we have, I mean, this is this is fairly easy to uh to show the the the, the misguidance, the falsehood, and the um, the the innovation that's in it. So if this is one of your scholars, I mean, what does that say about your your whole your whole operation? Yeah. Almost not. Another quote he said is, and I mean, we talked to him, he said, well, we know he wouldn't lie, but I mean, but, Jamal, you know this is not true. He said Sheikh yeah. Mubarak Jelani established Islam in America. This is absolutely true. No, it's well, absolutely false. Go uh, go refer to Fatima Jelani's. She has a whole documentary. Yeah. About some aspects of the history of Islam in America, how Islam was came over here in from slavery from Africa already. It's been here ever since the beginning, right? Jamal, my man, go watch Roots. Yep. It's simple. <laughs> Alex Haley. It's in his go read his book. Like, come on, man. This 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 stuff is uh... and even if you don't want to go back that far, like Mubar July came to the Darl Islam. Yes. Like, huh? Yeah, yes. they were. <laughs> uh, let's see. What else did he say here? Um, so another another quote about the Akhlabate. He says, the only way this path can be straight is by the way of Akhlabate. As Rasulullah Sallallahu said, they will be with us until Qiyamah. So let's actually, like, go into um, some of the actual, like, Islamic, like the Hadiths. So people can have a good, we, we touch on this a lot, but we have to kind of drill this home because people really get stuck up on this Akhla Bait stuff. 
So um, there's a Hadith. And where is it at? That's uh, somewhere in here. But anyway, the, the, the more of the story is, is that there's no obedience to anyone if they're not following the Quran and Sunnah. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if they're Ahlul Bayt. It doesn't matter what their lineage is. There's no, there's nothing, right? And we know the Hadith that the guides, the guides that Allah has set, uh, left for us is the Quran and the Sunnah. That is the path, that is the straight path that Allah has left for us, that Rasulullah has left for us to follow. We say it every, like Mubarak made reference to the Fatiha. We say it every day, multiple times a day. This is our path. This is our straight path. There's nothing in our Salat, what Allah commands us to say during our Salat, that says, let me follow Ahla Bayt. There's nothing. We send blessings upon them. The righteous ones, the descendants, we, we do send blessings on Rasulullah and his family. Just like we send blessings on Ibrahim salam, and his family, we do do that. But at no point does it Ya Allah, please send me um, an Ahla Bay or a descendant of Rasulullah to guide me on the straight path. <laughs> it's never been in your Salat and it never will be. And you can, and, and if you can find one uh, you know, a uh, source of evidence from Allah or his messenger or anything that says that um, if a person is Ahlulbayt or claiming to be mm -hmm. Ahlulbayt, automatically follow them. They're definitely going to be guided. It's not true. I mean, the the the, the hadith of Rasulullah who, who, who said that if his own daughter were to Fatima mm -hmm. were to uh, steal, she would cut her hand. As telling you that just because you're Ahlul Bayt doesn't not automatically mean you'll be right guided and you're the right thing. And if they do something wrong, they are subjected to the same uh, uh, rules, regulations of Islam as everyone yeah. else. So if they're not qualified to be a leader, they ain't the leader. Yeah. If they're not qualified, if, if they do something that qualifies them for some sort of punishment, some admonition, some refutation, uh, then they get that too. They're just like everybody else in regards to their responsibility yeah. to Allah and what they they are what they must do uh, when what the Lord's commands and what they must avoid with the Lord's prohibitions mm -hmm. They're not above anything else. They have to learn the religion just like mm -hmm. everyone else. Just because they 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 say that Ahl Bayt ain't no downloads in this uh, in this life. They're not downloaded in their religion. I know he said that he was taken up to the sky and taught by. You know, in my mind, that he said that his grandmother told him that, like he didn't even experience it. He don't even remember nothing that he was actually taught. But this is not true. This is not the way that Allah works. This is not the Sunnah of Allah in which things are just downloaded. Mm -hmm. There's only one. There's only one actually authentic statement in which a person receives uh, some overnight uh, um, rectification and. Um, uh, some Islamic knowledge, and that is uh, yeah. Ali Mahdi, mm -hmm. who Allah says is going to rectify him yeah. in one night. Which the the earlier might say that he was not necessarily he's not necessarily going to be a a uh, you know some sort of well known pious figure, but in one night Allah will uh, rectify him and make him to where he will have the knowledge mm -hmm. and the ability and the, the taqwa and the piety or whatever that's needed to for yeah. that role. Other than that. Everybody else got to go it the hard way. Yep. You got to get in the books. You got to learn and study. And it takes a long yep. time. And these people that try to take these shortcuts, you know, I'm a shake so-and-so. I don't, you know, I, I just got taken up to the sky <laughs> and I learned everything. That's a, that's a daggone yep. lie. It's wow. a lie. And it's, it's, it, is, it is disrespectful and to the people. I mean, these people are over in Azhar, I mean, studying. I hope they're studying. But if you were studying and you know the effort and the and the and the, the discipline, the dedication and the and the struggle it is to, to stay on yep. your studies day in and day out, you should be upset that a person who didn't do no studying, you can tell when he opens the books and tries to read the Quran and things you know he didn't study. You can tell by the way he speaks, he didn't study mm -hmm. anything. You should be upset and like this man <laughs> is actually trampling on mm -hmm. your profession. This is your this this is you are an inheritor of the prophets. The prophets don't leave behind wealth. They leave behind the knowledge of Islam. And so we are trying to inherit yes. that. And they are lying about an inheritance that was left mm -hmm. to you and saying that they have it when they don't. And really, 
I real quick, on, I'll stop I, I want to ask Amr this because Amr is really into history, and this is you don't have to you don't have to go too far to re refute a lot of these things. So he's saying you have to follow Ahlabeit. That's the straight path. Mm -hmm. So, and then he later mentions, you know, um, this one I'm about to ask Amr. Amr, um, who was the first Khalifa after Rasulullah? Abu Bakr ibn Siddiq, who was not, uh, who, who was not, uh, not uh, who was not, uh, who was not, uh, at all. What um, about, so, um, the, the second one? Uh, so the second one was... Because they, they would have to get it right by the second time, uh, right? Of course, of course. I, I mean, well, according to the Shiites, uh, they believe that Ali was the only Khalifa. Um, oh. But it, there were three Khalifas uh, in Islam before they got to a Khalifa who, who, who was a So you had Abu Bakr, you had Umar, and then you had Uthman. And that was all before you got to a uh, Ahlubayt. To be the leader mm. of Islam, the the Khalifa of Islam. Um, so now, in so uh, Ali actually, um, uh, and even with that, he was the the um, the Khalifa. But not only was uh, Muawiyah in in that little mm -hmm. uh, squabble, so Muawiyah wound up being Khalifa. But even after that, the son of um, Ali or mm -hmm. Anhu, uh, Al Hassan, mm -hmm. who uh there was he actually mm -hmm. gave the uh the the leadership he yeah. abdicated and gave mm -hmm. to Muawiyah. So this is actually refuting yes. any of that by actual members of Ahlul Bayt. They're saying that it, we don't have to, yes, it doesn't exactly. have to be. Otherwise, what you're saying is that Al Hassan was wrong and yes. you're right. So you're basically refuting Ahlul and Bayt. It will go against and the saying, hadith that Rasul Sallam said that basically predicted how. Hassan would make a decision. I, I don't know, remember the exact wordings, but basically predicted that he was going to make a decision that was going to be beneficial to the Ummah. Yep. And basically the scholars say that this is the decision he made of abdicating the caliphship and saving the lives of many Muslims. Mm -hmm. So like, like Mubarak said, you're either saying that Hassan was wrong, or that he went against the orders of Allah and Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. For what? Was he afraid? Scared? Like, what was the, you know, like again, no matter what road you go down with this TMOA bullcrap, there's a contradiction. Yep. Just let them lead the way. Um, so here, and I'm going to kind of, kind of skip over these, but he made a lot of like theological issues according to Islam. Like he makes this statement that Allah wants good for a Talib or a Murid. He will place them in the company of the Sufis. What? You won't find this. this is a lie. Straight up. Because like there's there's multiple hadiths, and one that came to mind is where in the Bukhari Muslim, where Rasulullah Sallallahu said, "Whoever Allah wants goodness, what does He give him? Understanding of the religion." Yep. He doesn't say, "Oh yeah, go hang out with these guys over here that are bobbing their heads and you know shaking up and doing dances." No. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at how it doesn't even make sense. A scholar, a student of knowledge, someone who actually studied would never even say this. We'll put him with the Sufis. This is the this is the source. This is you. You prepared this. You wrote out on paper what you're going to say, and this is what you mm -hmm. came up with. The weakest, I mean, most easy to refute statement. It's not even a hadith. You're quoting Junaid al Baghdadi, which, okay, you know. I mean, may Allah bless him for his efforts, but he's not mm -hmm. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So why can't you go to that? He puts him with the Sufis. What is a Sufi? Some of them dance and sing. Some of them don't even mm -hmm. pray. What? Which yeah. ones? Right. He doesn't say put him with the Muslims. He doesn't say put him with the righteous. He doesn't say put him with the people of Quran. He doesn't say put him with the <laughs> Muhaddithin. He doesn't say put him with yes. the Mufassirin. He just skips just all that Sufis. and just says put him yeah. with the Sufis. I know that there are Sufis who don't pray. They don't even fast. They say that their Islam is in their heart. They just yep. dance. And so this is what when Allah wants good for them, this is what he does. Just put them yep. with the Sufis. Shame on you, brother. And Shame for on you, Jamal. claiming to be you, you, a Qadri Muslim, Qadri Sufi, right? Go read any of Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jalani's books. Who, And a lot of his books is severely, harshly criticizing Sufis. Yeah. I mean, he, he goes into all these different deviant Sufi groups. But I guess if you're, you're in a group, that means Allah wants good for you. And he also, I, I mean, I'm, oh, you, well, okay, you got it down here, but I was going to, I saw the uh, ayah in oh, okay. Switch and Nisa, yep. in which he 
he read and quoted um, badly. And listen, man, I, I, I get it. I'm, I'm pretty sure if someone runs all the tape back of me reciting or, or, or quoting some Quran or Hadith, I'm pretty sure that I slipped up and said an Arabic word wrong here or there. But for the Jamaat scholar, the scholar of Al-Azhar, you're sitting in the one of the capitals, one of the main places for learning Arabic and understanding. It. And you talked about how you were teaching, you, you were explaining the teaching of Mubarak Jalani into Arabic for people who didn't know. You butchered this ayat badly. Um, and you should, I mean, you should know if you either read enough or you studied grammar, you would instantly have known when you made the mistake because it doesn't make sense. When, when the ayah says, yeah, okay, it's going to be with uh, 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 is okay, obey, it's a command to obey. So, if you know the word because you say you know Arabic, okay, and you should know some grammar over there in Egypt for all this time, so you would know that the whoever is you're supposed to be obeying, the command is telling you to obey, whoever you're supposed to obey, this is going to have a fatha, okay, it's going to have a fatha. Because if you put a kesser on it, it's going to change the mm. meaning. It's going to change the meaning. Or it just shows that you have such poor grammar skills. It's like, it's like you saying, you know, like uh, we would tease my daughter, uh, you know, when she was younger. Because she would say stuff like, instead of she stole the honey bun, she would say her stole the honey bun. You know, or <laughs> yeah, something yeah. like that, right? She would, she would just mm -hmm. say, like, it's, it's like, like cringeworthy grammar. Like, it means, it shows that you really don't know the language mm -hmm. like you should. And so... The way that you butchered this ayah, it's like you changed the meaning and it showed ignorance. It showed extreme ignorance of even what you were saying. And the thing is, if you had just been reciting it from your memory, if you just been reciting it off the cuff, whatever, but you had a prepared statement, you had it written mm -hmm. down. How do you do that? That means you don't even know the material that you're trying to teach mm -hmm. people. You're trying to tell people about something that you don't even know about yourself. You have not studied the ayah. You have not actually studied the tafsir of this. And it shows you didn't study the tafsir of this. Because what did you mention? He mentioned Sultan Dagon yep. Bahu. This is who he this is who he went to for the for the tafsir of yep. the ayah. Sultan Bahu. Who is he? When it, you you skipped over Ibn Kathir, a Tabri, um, uh, a Sa'di. You skipped over all types of people, Jalalain. <laughs> and uh, you know, people you, you could have at least went to. And, I mean, even Abu uh, Jilani, you know, had said, you know, study Tafsir Jalalain. You, you skipped over that and you found a random quote from Sultan Bahu that will, I mean, it was wrong. And Absolutely it was wrong. Absolutely wrong. Yeah. You know I mean? like, Absolutely wrong. And just I mean, to add on to that, like, um, I'm not, I'm not a, I'm not a Quran expert. I'm not a, you know, I'm not a great reciter. I, I, I'm not an expert of the Arabic language, but for, for me, to hear him say that, and I was like, "Wait, that doesn't sound right. <laughs> Something's wrong." Like yeah. for, I'm, I'm saying, because I'm yeah. I'm really not that guy. You know what I'm saying? Like I would have to literally like read directly from the, the thing. I won't be able to do it from memory. Some ayats, yes, but like, and for me, it's like, "Wait, that don't sound." So he made a mistake. Mm -hmm. we were talking about it. And we're like, "Yo, he made a mistake, yeah. right?" Yeah, yep. he did multiple mistakes. Yeah, he 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 butchered it that bad. You know, ati Allah wa ati Rasula. You know that that tells you who they should yeah. obey. Uti'u, okay, Uti'u, who should you obey? Allah wa Rasulah. That's how you know. That's the, that's how you when you speak Arabic, you have to do that. Otherwise, you'll confuse mm -hmm. the listener. So you're changing the words of Allah. I mean, it's, I, listen, if it was just a, a, if you were trying and you made the mistake and it was a sincere effort or whatever, then uh, that's one thing. But when you sit there and, and you're trying to tell people with authority, you're speaking to people with some, you know, coming from a place where they think you have the knowledge and you don't. This is where you get punished because you're talking without yes. knowledge and you're, you're actually in over yes. your head. So you're wrong for this. You butchered the words of Allah. And then you went to the tafsir and got a tafsir from someone who's not even a mufassirin. They're not. He got Sultan a, Bahu a tafsir is, from a tafsir that his sheikh never even used. <laughs> we learned this, you know, all this is land from. It just, it, 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 it's, it's got me so frustrated. I mean, that was like, it, it's so egregious, and it's, it's just. And this is, this is the danger. Like is, out of all these things, this is a real dangerous one because, 
there's such a punishment for speaking without knowledge, especially yeah. about Allah, Allah's book, a hadith. You cannot speak without knowledge. And if you go to any of the tafsirs, even if you want to just use the tafsirs that are approved in TMOA, you will not find any explanation of the Morshid Kamil in the, the Quran tafsir. And we he explains it. He gives like, oh, this is the, he, you know, he tries to use his Arabic and go to the Arabic dictionaries, and this is what it means. Morshi Kamil, very simple, meanly means the perfect guide. Who is the perfect guide on this earth? Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yeah. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the perfect guide, and that is the only thing that's perfect is Allah, right? But we use the word perfect generally to mean like the best and all this, you know, however you want to say it, okay? But when you say multiple things are perfect, because if you're saying, you know, your sultan, your sheikh is perfect, and of course you can't say that, you cannot say that Rasulullah is not the perfect guide, but what you have done is you have equated somebody to the pro the last prophet of Allah where other prophets are not even equated to. Mm-hmm. Like, you got to really think about what the words that you're saying. We talked about this in one of our previous shows where, you know, someone could be on the path to hell and say one word that will get them to heaven. One statement. And the same, the opposite applies. Someone could be on the path to Jannah and then make a statement that will throw them to the depths of hell. We have mm -hmm. to be very careful of what we say. And Jamal, you should, and you should know this, that you should issue a statement. You should take down that video. You should issue a statement to the people of the mistakes you made, correct yourself, retract your statements, apologize, to clear yourself with Allah. That's what you should do. Mm. And we challenge anybody, if we make mistakes, please help protect us yep. by checking us so that we can publicly correct ourselves and re retract our statements and say what is in accordance to Allah, the Quran, and, you know, and the Sunnah. Please, please, for our sake. And the thing is, it's very dangerous. The thing is, Jamal, is that if anyone watched your video and they believe and act upon uh, the things that you said, you will be responsible not only for your wrong, but their wrong too. They're still going to get whatever you know is coming to them for their actions based off what you said. Mm -hmm. But you're going to get a copy too because you led them to it and you confirmed it for them and you reinforced it for them. So you're going to get a share, too. So if you understand some of the things that we're saying and you and you can see where you were wrong, don't be prideful. Don't be arrogant. Just go out, make the statement, correct the mistakes where you made them so that Allah will free you, inshallah, from any wrongdoing that people do yes. after you. If you make a mistake, clean it up, clear it up. That way you're free from them because we all going to have enough trouble on our own dealing with our own sins and baggage when we meet Allah. You don't want someone else's stuff too, you know, because you might come to the realization. You might actually go to Azhar one day. You might actually attend and be like, man, this whole stuff that I was taught was false. I'm leaving it. But guess what? You made a video that, that, that reinformed, re confirmed and reinforced in the minds of some other people. You can't just leave them there in their ignorance. If you leave it, you're still going to be responsible for what you led them to. So you got to correct it before it's too late. The last thing we're going to talk about, because we're going to have to wrap up soon, and if anybody has any questions, quick questions that we can answer before we sign off, um, please post them in the chat. We'll try to answer as many as we can before it gets too late. Um, it's already late, and we apologize for the lateness, but we, you know, schedules and all that. But he goes into a whole bit basically condemning african-american culture you know this is this is a thing that jelani has been known for he says some people have the audacity to try and complain that he was talking bad about african-american culture he was right the african-american culture was a pagan culture they always take the worst of the worst of pagan aspects and he gave us his culture the pakistani culture mm. so basically he condemns the african-american culture he he he, he agrees with mubarak jelani which is he's right he can have his opinion you know we can we can have our opinions all right um and he also says that the african-american culture has always taken the worst of pagan aspects and mubarak jelani gave him 
his culture. So the first thing I want to mention about this thing is that there's a there's a strong argument that can be made is that the African American culture is the most influential culture in, in the, the world. entire world yeah. right now. In the entire world, not just currently for decades. Mm-hmm. Where did rock and roll music come from? Where did country music come from? Where did certain dances and certain customs, where did certain foods come from? And you see that most of these types of things trace back to some kind of African American culture. And I wish this is what I wanted to bring up, but I didn't have time, is that we can make an argument that African Americans are all Africans that are on the American continent, which means Canada, South America, and all that. You got a whole video where your new sultan, your new sheikh, Noor, is driving around listening to Jamaican music. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, like, you know, is this is this the pagan culture that 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 your your new sheikh is actually listening to? And what's more pagan than African Americans? who left Christianity that are coming to these Sufis that supposedly Allah put them in because he wanted good. And they're actually going on public stages saying, yeah, we believe in the Trinity. (laughs) (laughs) And and, and there's another thing too. There's another thing that he says, African American culture is pagan. I would like to know what is specifically pagan about African American Mm -hmm. culture. Um, Everything in African American culture is not great. Yeah, I'm not correct. even saying that. Correct. But so he says he gave you Pakistani culture. <laughs> he didn't say Islamic yeah. culture, or you know. So, uh, what does where does Pakistani culture come from? Oh man, Whoa, Indian man. culture. <laughs> and what is Indian Yo. culture? I mean. So, I mean, did he even think about what he said? So you're trying to... eh, eh, eh. Pakistani culture, most of it, and the Pakistanis will tell you Indian culture has such a heavy influence on... uh, Because basically, at one point in time, maybe he doesn't know this, Pakistan wasn't Mm -hmm, always a country. It was just India. And then they had a war in in the the mid-1900s or whatever, and then they had a little partition or whatever, and then Pakistan became Pakistan, and then India stayed India, and then Bangladesh got cut off and yep. it's kind of, you know, India's in between there. But the point is that at one point in time, India was just yeah. India and Pakistan was part of India. And that whole culture is all the same. Someone just at one point in time drew a line the on English. a map and renamed an area Europe, and Europe. that's it. The yep. British. Yeah. So, I mean, you're talking about pagan culture and you said he gave you Pakistani culture, which is actually Indian culture, which is, I mean, the most. Most pagan. I the mean, most it, pagan. I mean, the most <laughs> pagan, the most sheer field, the most, uh, you know. Um, let's see. I mean, the most let's just Google goes, this. Let's just Google this. Indian they got, gods. They got too many accounts. Nah, <laughs> Indian gods. Shiva, Hanamun, Brahma, Vishnu, Durga, Indra, Ganeshi, Krishna, Kali, 15 more. Katukikia, Sasrasati, Surya, Agni, Varya, Ayupan, Raya, Yeah, Come on, man. Yeah. So, so, so do you want to know where these shrines come from? The shrines? You know what, where, where that culture derived from? Indian mm-hmm. culture. The Indians, they have the shrines where they put food out for their mm-hmm. gods. Right? And they go there. The, the Pakistani culture, this is there too. This is where the shrine. So, so the, the actual shrine that you built in commemoration and love and adoration for your sheikh, your Morshid Kamil, this is straight from Indian culture, pagan yep. culture. So you want to say that African-American culture is pagan? All right, prove it. Show me something. It. I won't. I, I mean, if it's got, we'll confirm it. If it's true, we'll deny it if it ain't. But we ain't even claiming like, you know, African culture, this, this is our culture. We're African-Americans, so we have a lot of the culture that we grew up with. We ain't saying that it's, it's Islam. Yeah. We're not claiming it to be part of Islam. We're not claiming it mm-hmm. to be holy. I mean, we say certain things. We have certain language. We, we, we use certain words. That's just how we, that's just our culture. But when you just say it's pagan culture, prove it. But we can prove that this alleged Pakistani culture that he gave you that was better than your own culture is pagan. It comes yep. from shirk. It comes from Indian yep. culture. So flip it on the other side and prove that what he gave you is more correct or better in some sort of way. Than the pagan, than 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 the pagan culture he gave you. That what you had was worse than what he gave you. 
I don't think you can. Well, let me know if you guys can hear this, and I want the people in the chat to respond. Would you? Who do? You, what do you think is more of a pagan culture, African American or? <laughs> listen now nah, first of all Jamar, listen. <laughs> i don't even think pakistan has been around long enough to actually have a culture for real like like to really define because it was yeah. ni- 1948 1947 like shortly after world war ii where it where europe was like listen you guys you guys are now your own thing so like you, you guys haven't even been around long enough to actually have your own culture really form it it's really no. have it, its roots like it hasn't even been 100 years yet you guys have been free for 70 80 years like the African American. For first of all, your chef loves our food, <laughs> so, so so that's part of the culture that he loves. So like <laughs> the women, and women. women. Uh, and women. The light skin ones anyway, but yeah, yeah. exactly because uh, Pakistani food, Indian food, that's the same thing. And can you tell? Can anybody tell the difference between a Pakistani wedding and an Indian wedding? No. Can, can anybody tell, tell the difference between a, 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 a Indian Muslim wedding versus a Pakistani? Indian wet or a, a Hindu Indian wedding or a, a, a Sheik Indian wedding. Yeah. No, you, you can't. So uh, th- I'm so glad you pointed that out because that's just such an obvious, like, dude, you are spitting bull crap. Since mm-hmm. like this is the first time I heard of the African American culture being pagan, it's the first time. Mm-hmm. First time in my life I've ever heard that. If you want to say Christian with some Islamic roots, with some like maybe some like witchcraftery stuff that you go down to the islands, like you could say you could work that in there, but to really go to paganism, yeah. Yeah. I don't that's the first man. It's first for me. So I think that's all we got. I mean, there's a lot of other stuff that he said. I um if anybody wants to get the rest of the contradictions and do their own analysis. That's fine. You can even do your own personal reaction videos and send them to us. We'll post them on our channel. Um, there's a lot of stuff he said in there. And Jamal, if you're watching this, you know, we tried to uh, just so we let the people know, we tried to reach out to him privately so we could privately advise him. We tried multiple means. We sent text messages. Um, we sent Facebook messages. We actually posted a message under the exact video. So that he could see it, but they removed the message. So it was multiple means. We tried to reach this guy to advise him privately, to give him that respect. Um, they did not respond. Um, they did not reach out to us. They had no answers. We even reached out to Dordana because she's allegedly a Kadi, you know, and asked to provide proof because uh, when you're a Kadi, this is your responsibility now that yeah, you yeah. take up under the eyesight of a law that you have to answer questions and give verdicts. The people that come with you come, come to you with issues. So we asked for support of the seven sultans from the Holy Quran and the Sunnah. We did not receive a response. We did not expect to receive a response because there is no response that we have, as we have proven time and time again. And um, if there's any questions, please post them now because we're going to wrap up in just in a few minutes. Oh, there's a lot of activity in the chat. Alhamdulillah. Let's see. Um, questions, 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 questions. Um, mm. um, like y'all, y'all still spreading the errors and faults of a misguided leader who has misguided others. Is this the way in Sunnah how to rectify a, a people? Barakallah. Um, I would long. say, uh, we have stories of um people who were astray or led people astray, uh, from the Sirah, from the, the Quran, from the Hadith. Um, where you can use these stories of these people who were uh, astray to help guide those who were astray or possibly going off the wrong path now. Um, so, like for Jelani claiming all these things, you could look for the story of like Musaylim al the, uh, the, the liar, right? So, you could use that story mm-hmm. and see how he went wrong and talk about what, how, how he, he did wrong to lead you people to, today. Hey, this is wrong. He's wrong too. Go back to Allah. Who is this Baki Sunken? I don't know. But he, yeah. But he's saying, so what are y'all thoughts of Sheikh Qaradawri and Sheikh Wasifi? May Allah have mercy on them. And then he says, yeah, that- the foundation is Tawheed. There are many gods. People don't even know the foundation of Shahada. What? Hey, what? Maybe there's a typo, hopefully. Baki? There aren't many gods. All right. Uh, Mubarak, do you know those Sheikhs? 
Um, I heard Carl Darwin. Yeah. Um, yeah. He did. Uh, Carl Darwin. Uh, he, he just passed away recently. Oh, he's, you know, oh, he's, oh okay. Yeah. He's, he got a bunch of books. Jake Carl Darwin. Yeah. He has a bunch of books. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, some, yeah, there's some. He he has some haters. He has some supporters. I mean, it's like it, it, it's a long issue that's really gotcha, outside gotcha. of our okay. uh, our range. Okay. You know? Well, the, we want to end on one of the quotes from Jamal, that is actually the truth, and we've been proving it for the last four to five years. And this is this is supported in the Quran, and inshallah, after we read the quote. And um, I'll read the English uh, of the of the, the ayat that Inshallah Mubarak will close us out with. Um, and he, it's it's ayat in Surah the Seventeen, it's ayat eighty one. And I don't know if you're going to recite some multiple ones because it's only one ayat that that we're going to refer to. So Jamal says in his in his thing, he says, "There's no covering up because you can't cover the truth. You can't cover the truth. You can't cover." The truth, the truth is always gonna, you know, you can't cover the light with darkness. And this is absolutely true. These are facts. 100. All of all the stuff he said in this, this is the absolute truth because this is supported by the Quran, even though he did not provide the reference in the Quran. Allah says and say, truth has come. And falsehood has departed. Indeed, falsehood is ever bound to depart. So truth will always conquer falsehood. And just like this audio or this video that he put out, just like all of Mubarak Jelani's teachings, just like all the practices in TMOA, all that falsehood that existed has been exposed. And the mm -hmm. truth comes out time in time again, Alhamdulillah, because this is what Allah does. This is the Sunnah of Allah, is that He extinguishes falsehood with truth. We are grateful and humbled to actually just be a part of it. That Allah is allowing us to be here and be imperfect tools to help spread this message and help be the voices to uncover this. But by Allah, if we didn't say a word, Allah would expose it another way. In another way, he does not need us, but I encourage ourselves first and everybody else that's out there. Try to grab I like you know how we invest, right? You want to you want to get it on the ground floor before it runs out, right? Before it, 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 it's not an opportunity, you're not gonna make any money on it, right? We have a great opportunity here to take advantage of all these blessings. By just jumping on this bandwagon of trying to spread this truth that Allah is going to expose anyway. Mm -hmm. Just say the truth. Speak the truth. Speak against the falsehood. You could do it privately. You could do it publicly. You could do it secretly even. There's, there's ways to do it. And you can grab onto those blessings. And this, we have talked about this multiple times. This is the only reason why we exist. Because we, we stayed up, alhamdulillah, two hours plus hours after Isha in the times of Tahajit, Alhamdulillah, the real halaqa, the real gatherings of dhikr, speaking about the truth and promoting the message of Allah. And we're all, inshallah, going to get blessings for that. Us speaking, you guys in the chat participating, you guys watching the videos, you guys liking the videos, you guys sharing the videos. And inshallah, I want to encourage as many people as possible to also get to the point where you are on this platform. You are making videos. We will help you. We will push you. We will show you how to do it. We can even do it anonymously. You can have a voice changer and be behind a black screen and do the same thing. It's really not that hard. You could dedicate 30 minutes out of your entire week and it will go a long way. I mean, so... We'll leave with that, and Mubarak, um, inshallah, can close us out. And the truth has come, and falsehood has departed. And indeed, falsehood by its nature 
is always bound to depart. So, I'm going to go to the next one. I'm going to go to the next one. I'm going to go to the next one.